Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you my workflow, my Insta360 X3 workflow from start to finish, from mounting it like this to exporting and doing whatever you would like with it. This video is sponsored by Insta360. This is a camera that films in a 360 degree bubble. So no matter where you are, wherever you mount it, it's always going to capture that sweet, sweet action. And if you use my affiliate link in the description below, you do get the Moto Bundle kit for free, which is a mount like this, a claw mount, a grip, and the visible selfie stick, plus a whole bunch of other adapters and things that you can stick all over your bike. You get it for free, it's like a hundred bucks worth, and you can literally do what we're doing right now and capturing some content. So the purpose of today is to show you guys how easy it is to just, you know, grab some footage of your ride. I'm not doing anything special. I wing it every, every time, man. I go out on a ride, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna try mounting it here. Sometimes things don't work, but you're always guaranteed an angle because you're in this 360 degree world. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at this. 360 degree, um, you've got a million angles to work with from the one mounting position, which is damn sick. We've got Jesse here. He actually runs a sick little brand. It's called MCM Apparel. These sexy, sexy jeans that don't look like moto jeans, but they actually are. And he actually knows how to ride these trails because he was brought up in the area. He does. <laughs> He's being modest. I mean, he's gonna teach me a few things, hopefully. Uh, but I just wanna show you guys how the Insta360 works in a real life environment. It's a bit different to what I usually do. So I did an ADV course. And it's really safe to ride in Victoria. Man, day and night, <laughs> like improvement in riding and everything. My biggest issue is my leaning uh, the opposite <laughs> ways to what I should be doing. It's just getting used to the dirt rather than the road because the road, you lean with the bike. And this, you lean against it, so it's pretty, your brain just tells you not to do what you're doing. Such big bikes for these little tiny trails, man. Just gonna pull over here, bro. All right, so that's cool. Another position that I found awesome. I mean, let's see how we go, because of the old, the grip and the, the wobblies. I guess with motorcycle riding as well, and bumpy roads and everything, you have to be careful of how far you extend the, the selfie stick because then you can just full on lose grip around here. But I'm going to mount it here so it has this little brace here to sort of support it so it will stop this movement so much. Get one of the adhesive mounts, stick it there and lock it right up and you're not going to get any claw sort of um, movement or anything. But this is a very cool angle. You get a really nice frontal view like what you're seeing right now. And yours, Jesse, um, I might just swing it forward. So we're just gonna stick one here, just like that, not too far out, so it doesn't wobble too much. It's gonna wobble a bit, but the flow state in this is incredible, so you're not gonna get too much of it. And this next one, I've taken the uh, selfie stick off, the invisible selfie stick, because we're gonna just mount this. Back here, It's this is a bit of a risky one, uh, but because we don't have the selfie stick, it should be okay. Always aim the screen away from the <laughs> the incoming rocks and stuff. Yeah, we'll suss something out. So Jesse is gonna gonna zhoosh over. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna sit this. Is that cool here? The other one is mounted there, so we'll get some front wheel suspension angle. You got a doggy. Oh, bloody launched it, Ava. <laughs> Alright, that was uh, that was the jump shot. <laughs> I'm going to try to get just a smooth shot next to him. I'm going to try to extend this out as far as I can. At least I want to try to get as close as I can to him. Cool. All right, let's let's try this. Here we go. Another cool thing with Insta360 are these GPS remote controls. So when they're out of reach, obviously I can't uh, <laughs> can't start or stop that. Just hit this bad boy, dunk, and now we're rolling. And now this is a cool way if you want to just. You know, film yourself, you can put an Insta360 on your mate's bike. But that's what I usually do anyway when I'm camping, especially with Jesse and everything. I stick it on his bike and it just gets footage of me riding my bike. I look all sick, I look awesome. Jesse looks sick, he looks awesome. Yeah, and I just, and it, you know, it all looks good. 
And another very, very cool thing with the GPS remote is if you want that awesome overlay showing your speed, showing your altitude, all that sort of stuff, you can do that in post. And this is the layout that you're seeing right now. And um, let's just speed it up. I'm actually curious to see how accurate it is. Woohoo! <laughs> That's the GPS remote, which is cool. And I'll show you how to do that in the studio. So you got your Insta360, now what we have to do is get the files from here onto your computer. Now you can plug a USB-C cable straight into your Insta360 and then plug that into your Mac and transfer that way. I think it's actually quicker though to take the battery out, take your SD card out. If you have one of these little memory card adapters, the micro SD card adapters where it makes the micro SD slip into the SD card, and it's like it makes it an SD card, and then stick that in your Mac, transfer the files over, it happens a lot faster, it's a lot quicker. That's how I do it anyway. And now the way I structure my folders is like this. So I have my hard drive, I have my yearly folders, open that up, then I have all the months within that folder. So we're in May, open that bad boy up, and we've got Insta360 workflow, which is what we're doing. And then I have all the cameras that I've used, and then I just drag and drop all the footage into those corresponding folders. And these are our two folders right here. So just click and drag them all in there. That's where they are. And they're, you know, they're pretty large folders. Let's have a look how big these things are. Yeah, 39, about 40 gig each one. Yeah, oh, that one's a lot bigger. And then I make another folder called Insta360 Rendered. So when we export all our reframed angles in the Insta360 Studio, this is the folder that it's gonna go into. Now if editing video does not interest you at all, you don't like it, there is a kind of workaround and it involves getting other people to edit your work, which I'm gonna be making a video on next week. So make sure you tune into that episode if that's something that you're interested in. I'm actually interested in it as well, because getting people to edit your stuff, yeah. That's where it's at. I love editing, but just time, you know. Okay, so let's jump into this. So we're gonna open up Insta360 Studio 2023. You're gonna hit that little plus sign. You're gonna import your footage. So this is where my stuff is. I'm gonna go Insta360J, highlight all those, hit open, does the thing, does it really quickly as well. And here are all your videos down the sidebar. You can sort of scrub through them all um, just to see what you like. If you can't see this sort of view, um, you might be in like one of these views or something. So obviously just click over to this. I feel like this is the best one because you can actually see what's going on when you just scrub a little bit. The first thing I like to do, which one are we going to go for first? All right, let's check this angle out first. Um, I was actually intrigued at how this angle would turn out. I haven't really done it before. This is, this is a new angle for me. <laughs> and yeah, it looks pretty mad. That looks wicked. I like it. You see the suspension working and everything. It's a bit of a tight, actiony sort of spot. You've got all the, you know, grass and everything moving really fast. I dig it. Um, okay, so what you may have noticed, if I just hit play again and leave it, everything is just sort of going whack. Whenever the bike turns, it's just going out there. <laughs> it's moving out of the frame. Not ideal. So the very first thing I do before doing anything is going over to here and hitting direction lock. So now that locks the direction. So now the bike will stay exactly where I want it. So good. Now from here, I like to sort of, you know, might let the video play and just have a little, just have a little look around, see what we got to work with. So that already, and I'm just, I'm just zooming out. You zoom out, zoom in on your mouse. I'm using a magic mouse. Um, so you zoom right out. I'm just sort of having a look and seeing what looks cool. That's basically all I'm doing. So I think I think that looks <laughs> that looks mad. I just zoom in a little bit. I don't like doing the whole fish eye too much. It just sort of warps everything a little bit. But I think that looks cool. So that's already that's a cool angle. And then yeah, and then that's that's a cool angle as well. Okay. You could do a side one like that if you wanted to. But yeah, I'm gonna stick with these two. So from here, let's just move it back a little bit again. That was, oh, that was pretty cool there. A bit of dust kicking up. Oh, sand. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to start it from here. <laughs> right from there. Okay, now, so to trim all this off, a really quick way to do it is just to hit this. You can grab this guy and just slide it this way. I just go, dunk, and it's already, you know, cut it up. Um, you're going to hit a keyframe. So this is just going to mark this exact, what you're seeing here, it's going to mark it. Boom, all the settings are dialed in, the positioning, everything, field of view. Um, and I'm happy days with that. That's cool. I don't want to change that 
really at all. And so then I'm going to drag it. Actually, no, it's a bit too tight. So I'm going to go back to the keyframe and I'm just going to go whoop. You can see everything changing down here. And that looks pretty cool. Okay, now you're going to have that go for as long as you want to go for. So I'm going to make it go to about, mm, about here. Okay. And then to trim off this whole other section, yeah, you can grab it, go like that and drag it and line it up and everything. Or you just go douche and it just cuts it where your playhead's at. That's it. <laughs> That's the first angle. Then you're going to go to this little button. This is the start export button. You got your file name, you got your file path. You can either make this go to your desktop or put it into that rendered folder that we made up earlier. Just find it, hit it, say open. Yes, we're gonna go into there. So that when it renders, it's just gonna go straight in there. You don't need to go to your desktop and then drag it back over and just keep double handling things. Bang, straight in the folder, happy days. I've created a preset parameter because I'll be editing in 4K in Final Cut Pro. I've made the resolution 4K. So if you wanna go ahead and copy this and punch it in as well. Um, and then the encoding format is ProRes 422. So this just makes encoding a little bit better. It makes the, the quality of the video better, color and all that sort of stuff. But it does come at a hefty file size. So this, how long is this clip? What is it, 21 seconds? could be 21 seconds and it's 1.59 gigs so it's huge i mean yeah you can do other ones and it brings it right down you know so this is just how i do it do whatever you want now instead of hitting start export we're just going to go add to queue boom it's going to put in a queue then when we load all these up you're just going to hit this button here export all and then douche 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 you can just go and have a cup of tea come back and it'll be done this is a thing that confused me so because that's in the queue this section here, we can no longer edit. If we go back here and change the view, that's going to export to the new view that you change. So we have to sort of leave this section here until you export it. So we're gonna move the playhead back here. Okay, and then we're going to, we're just gonna drag this right back again. I'm gonna move it a little bit forward so we'd leave that section uninterrupted. And now we're ready to put in our new, new sort of section. So we're gonna spin the camera around. Rink. Right there, I like it a lot. We're gonna hit this button. It's another keyframe, boom. Now I like to go here and click on this little guy and hit none. This is a transition. These are all transitions, different types of transition from when you wanna make the camera move around. I don't want any of that. I just want hard cuts. I just want static shots for now anyway. And so I just like to make this none. So that means, if we just go back here, that means as we're going, it's just gonna stay on that back shot until we get to this next keyframe then Douche, it's back to the, it's straight to the front. Now, if we were to make this like one of these, for example, as we move the player head around, it's gonna just slowly turn around, ring. There we go. Now it's right where we wanted it. So I like to just make it none, just in case it alters the, the file that's in the queue, just in cases. And then just do the exact same thing, however long you want it for. And now just remember, like one second is a lot of memory when in um, ProRes. So we're just gonna have that little section. We're gonna add the cue as well. Boom, done. All right, cool. So we've got those two angles. Here's, here's the jump one. This is the one where Jesse launched over. How good is that? Junk. The beauty about it. Yeah, you can just look anywhere. Okay, so this one might be a bit of a mission, but it'd be a good example to show you. So we're gonna trim it. Actually, bring it back a little bit. Give us a bit of space. We're gonna trim it. And we're just gonna bring this along. Okay, so that's where he pops out. Now what I like to do as well is imagine the rule of thirds. As far as I know, there are no, there's no options to turn on the grid, you know, the, the grid, rule of thirds. And usually with rule of thirds, you can line the bottom, the bottom third up with the horizon um, or the top third up with the horizon, however you want to do it. And then you want your subject, the point of interest really, to be where those crosses are, to be where the lines line up as the you know where the grid is so you, if you imagine like some lines here and some lines there and there so you got these four points of interest there 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 and there so as best you can i like to try to line it up as good as possible so we're just going to put in a keyframe here just to see how we're sort of going uh, might have hit natural view this flattens everything out so you don't get any of that fish eye sort of warpage and then everything makes a little bit more sense now now if we put our imaginary lines there like that, like that. 
So you can probably bring that up a little bit and that's about where that third is along here-ish. And it just means that it just makes a little bit more sense to your eye and it's not just like the composition's all bad. Okay, so that's one keyframe there. And then as we're moving over, that's so where is he? He's in the air, he's already landed, he's already out of here. Okay, so we're gonna zoom up on the timeline. I'm just gonna drag that back a little bit. How good does that look? Okay, so he's in the air. So I want it to basically go zhoosh, follow him around and then bang when he lands. Spewing I'm here, what an idiot. <laughs> Keyframe here, boom. And then I'm gonna move it around. I'm gonna drag this. Doosh, yeah, how good's that? So it's about there. So I might make it just a little bit earlier. So it's so like this. You want to watch the land as it happens. Pop another keyframe here. Let's see how it looks so far. Way, way too fast. Okay. So we're gonna. You can just click and drag these. That's the cool thing about the the keyframes. If you just want to move it a bit earlier, you can. Right, this one needs to be up here like this. Something like that. We're getting there. It still feels a little bit jolty to me. So it's dunk, dunk. Yeah, that's not too bad. So what you can do as well on this middle one, just click on it. Might just zoom it out a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, but it's still it's a little bit clunky. You can feel that like tick 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 tick. I'm gonna try slipping. I was thinking, <laughs> so it's gonna go fast in. Boom like that. And then we're going to slip it out and that should smooth things out a little bit. Yeah, it does. If you want to extend those out a little bit more, you can. Ah, oh, that's heaps better. Mad. I love it. I reckon that's awesome. That's one just see. He's burning away. Just going to trim that off there. Add to Q. Boom. All right, so we've got this cool ride by one now. Now, instead of keyframing every single little thing in to try to keep me centered and stuff like that. It can get pretty tedious and it's, it's pretty hard to keep nice and stable and everything. Easiest way guys is just to literally hit the deep track. <laughs> I use deep track a fair bit. So let's just hit that. Boom. Just gonna click on that. Yeah. And away you go. Just let it go. It's tracking. It tracks very well. All right. When you're done, you just hit stop tracking. Now you can go back and have a little squeeze at what it did. Boom, this is tracking on. So yeah, just get like a really nice clean, clean shot of you riding. This is on Jesse's bike. And that's how you can get some cool footage of just you cruising. Very, very simple. And then just trim off each edge and then add to cue. All right, and now the one you've all been waiting for, the gauges on the dials and all that sort of stuff. So when you film with the GPS remote, you'll have this new option right here. So if we go back to another video, this one, not there. But if you have the GPS remote and you hit record with it, you now have this whole thing. This is wicked. Um, to turn them on, just turn on each one, whichever one you want. We'll have them all on. Let's go. And then that's it. <laughs> you just hit play and you've got them all there, which is really cool. They've got different styles. And then you can also go into advanced and you can change the colors of things, the size of things and the opacity. Pretty, pretty wild. Oh no, my mouse just died. I got a backup. Backup mouse. Okay, basically once you're done, you hit the exports and then you have your massive queue here and then you just hit that export all and then it just starts doing its thing and just starts punching them all out. The Insta360 Studio remembers what you've done to the video. So let's close this. We're gonna close it completely. Okay, now we're gonna open it back up. All right, nothing's in here. Open all those. There we go, so that's the tracking one that we just did. So it's all there still. Now what that means is that you can go back in, if you wanna change it to this for your phone, for socials and all that sort of stuff, you still can just do it that easily without even changing anything and then just re-export it and you're in nine by 16 now. And you can, if you want, just make it, you know, fit. <laughs> very, very simple, but it's very clever that it does, it remembers. It remembers everything. This is how I use Insta360 Studio. And the only reason why I do it in the studio is to get the 4K and to get the ProRes and everything. And to obviously take all my clips now and put them into Final Cut Pro where I do my grading and everything. 
Let's take a look at that now. Okay, so you're in Final Cut Pro. If you do use Final Cut Pro, you just hit this little guy here to import your media, find the Insta360 rendered folder, hit that, hit import selected, boom, all there. Here they all are. To be able to scrub through them like I am here, just hit S. So now I'm stop, it's can't scrub and scrub. Okay, so now this sort of section, the editing process is obviously, it's up to you. This is your creative, however you want to do it. You want to put some nice classical relaxing music in the background, you can do that. You want to put some heavy death metal in, do that. Do whatever you want. This is this is your choice. First for me, I like to just get a series of you know, like a few shots in, just to sort of throw it out there, get something sort of happening on your timeline. Okay, and so let's just say we've got all our clips in there now. It's all looking pretty good. The next thing I do is just add a track in. Now the track determines when I'm gonna be switching cameras. So usually, usually I do it to the beat. So we've got that at the start. So let's just mute these, press V on those, it disables everything. So that, that's where I reckon I'll start the video, right there. Click on the track, boom. And then with this, you can hit P and then trim the back side of the clip. And then it adds that little bit of space there by hitting P and then you hit A, it gives you a little cursor. See the difference between the cursors? P, A. Boom, right. Already that just makes it feel a bit exciting, a bit punchy, hells yeah. I might just turn it all down a bit, turn the volume down so we can hear the music a bit more. Maybe not too much. Okay, and another quick way to, to trim to the beat is by highlighting the track, getting ready to press M on the beat. And then, right there. Boom. You get the picture. So you can do that the whole way through the track. And then that just makes it easier for, you know, you can just see everything where everything is. Just be like, okay, I want, I mean, this one is a bit whack. <laughs> Let's just make it this one. So you can just trim that off there. And this one needs to come out a little bit longer. Dunk. And then this one can be trimmed there. So now we've got, and so it's just rendering a little bit. Easy. Cool. It's already sort of feeling kind of good. And then I might just add some, add some gradage to it. So I'm hitting Command Four, Command Five. It brings up your your little panels here. A lot, douche. Chuck a lot on. Okay, we're gonna go over here. Motor feels LUT pack, and because we're in the forest, we're gonna get a bit of forest freedom sort of stuff, but not too much. I always shoot in vivid color profile now. It's fine. It's it's so fine. That's that's literally all I do. Vivid color profile. Everything's on auto. No magic here, guys. It's just, you've got the same thing as I do. Boost a bit of highlights, give it a bit of contrast, bit of punch, bit of kick. Okay, something like that. Looks pretty cool. Bit of a difference already. And now, because it's meant to be like a sort of cinematic sort of action scene, the color, I'm just gonna mess around with the color a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little bit of teal just to make it look, you know, a little bit cinematic. Um, it's all about playing around a little bit, something like that. That looks cool already. So let's have a look that look before. Once again, I'm doing this super quick just for example's sake. But yeah, you can, you know, you see the, the cinematic sort of teal and orange-ish sort of thing going on here. Command C, copies all those settings. Command Shift V, paste. It looks pretty cool. Cool, I'm, I'm digging the way that's looking already. How was it before and after? Yeah, before, after. Yeah, that looks cool, I, I like it. So I'm gonna just keep on powering through this and we'll have a look at the final result soon. Okay, here is the final result for the action sequence anyway. Yeah, that's, that's all I pretty much did was exactly what I showed you. I just maybe rearranged everything a little bit and just did some volumes. So when we're shooting straight up in the air, the volume dips down a little bit here, just to give it that feeling that we're, you know, it's further away. That's obviously just audio dragged from the previous clip. So there's nothing too crazy going on here. This clip is what you saw at the start of this video. Now for the actual body of the section, what I usually do for this sort of stuff 
I use the main camera as the base layer of the camera. So in this instance, it's my point of view camera. That's what I was recording audio to. That was just on all the time and I was just talking to it while I was moving the Insta 360s around. And then I just add the Insta 360 footage on top of that base layer. It's nothing crazy, you know. It's quite basic <laughs> my editing. I don't know if everyone's just like, well, man, like you do such a good job. I'm just sort of like, I appreciate it. I really do. But seriously, guys, like anyone, anyone can do this. Just. Have a, have a bit of fun, play around with it. By the way, if you'd like to check out my LUTs pack, I do have a link to them. Um, check out my store, I've got presets, I've got stuff, i got some stuff. <laughs> and make sure you go and check out that Insta360 sale. There are some big savings to be had. Go and check them out. I've got the links in the description below showing what's for sale and everything. It literally starts today. Start recording some simple Insta360 footage. You saw how easy it was. I just just different mounting positions. Every now and then I'll be riding after say like 10 minutes or something, change the location. And then it just gives you a whole bunch, a whole plethora of different angles. Have a bit of fun with it. If you don't have any action camera whatsoever, I highly, highly do, oh, I highly rate the X3. It's my go-to. I use it on every single motorcycle trip I do. And if you use my affiliate link in the description below, then you will receive the motorcycle mount bundle kit for free. And it just includes so many cool things. Thanks so much for watching guys. Make sure you stay tuned for next week. I'm actually very intrigued at how this is gonna turn out because it's not gonna be me editing the Insta360 footage, which is pretty exciting. It's gonna be this stuff. It's literally what I just showed you here, I'm gonna get someone else to do it. And this would be for you guys that just don't wanna edit your stuff. Like, who, you know, some people just don't wanna do it at all. And that's so, that's so fun. See you later guys, ride safe, and I'll see you next week. Peace.